In gaming and tech, in gaming and tech, we have Pokemon versus Pal World. The lawsuit is moving forward, so we have some details. There is going to be a new Steam Deck after all. Kind of, we'll talk about that. And then also one of the ones I'm most excited about this week is Hideo Kojima has just surprised Xbox users. We're gonna talk about that one and then fair bit more. There's actually quite a lot in gaming and tech this week. Welcome nerds to this week's edition of the gaming and tech news generally speaking. Now, I'm no Linus or Spawnwave or Gamers Nexus or insert channel that is dedicated to the tech and gaming news here. That's not what you're getting here. This is just enough to keep you informed, generally speaking. We do this just about every week as part of a larger news show called The Week in Nerddom over on the main channel. You can find that linked down in the description or at the end of this video. Now let's talk about some gaming and tech and maybe even some like photo video kind of news as well. Follow-ups and corrections here in the gaming and tech section we have a new steam deck coming from valve if you'll remember a week or two ago we talked about the fact that valve is kind of being great in that they're not going to iterate on their hardware once a year for the sake of iteration they're going to wait until there is a big advancement so that they can have a leap forward from generation to generation of their hardware well now they're releasing a new steam deck it's not, it's not what you're thinking though. It's not the way that that's being built up. It's good. It's, it's a little clickbaity, but what they're doing, it's just a new, there's a, it's a better screen. It's the same guts as the previous Steam Deck. It's a white casing this time. And that's basically it. <laughs> that is, that is kind of all that there is to this piece. So don't believe the hype. If, if you see anyone saying, oh my God, Valve's releasing a new Steam Deck, you know, they're trying to sell you something or it's just clickbait like I just did. So <laughs> there you go. Next up, we have Nintendo. Nintendo Switch 2, we got an update there. Nintendo has acknowledged that it will be backwards compatible. There is still a big question here though, because they have not specified, and, and this is one that normally I'd be like, really, do we need that kind of specification? In this instance, yes, I think we do. Because of the nature of the gaming industry going all digital, is the backward compatibility situation going to be only for digital releases, or is it going to be for physical as well? Will this have, will the new console have a similarly sized card reader, effectively is what it is, so that we can play our Switch 1 games on the Switch 2? That's the big question that still remains to be answered. Though it is pretty significant that we do know at the very least all of your digital per purchases are going to translate into your Switch 2. And that's largely because of the new Nintendo accounts situation. Because with this generation, with the current Switch generation, they started their Nintendo accounts, meaning you have everything you have purchased is not tied to your console anymore. It is now tied to you as an account with their service. You don't have to pay for your Nintendo account. You just have to pay for the, the access to Nintendo online. That's a different situation. But uh, if you are waiting to get a Switch because the, the Switch 2 is about to launch, sure, that makes sense. But you can start buying games now. That's kind of, that's uh, like, I totally am, am behind that. And honestly, if I had to put any conjecture into this, I would say very likely that it's just going to be the basically the same card reader slot. Just we're going to get higher capacity card uh, game cartridges. So and and I mean it's it just the, I I feel like the the big worry here is unfounded. We have seen them do something like this previously with the Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Advance had two separate cartridge readers, so you could put, there was one on what was it front and back? I think I, it's my SP. I don't remember how the OG Advance was, but on the SP you had one card reader in front and back, one for the Advance games and one for all of the previous iteration of Game Boy games. So yeah, that totally makes sense. We know that Nintendo. Nintendo's done something like this before, so if I had to guess, I would say yes, we're going to get a, a something, either two different card slots, or it's going to be the same card slot, just more capabilities built in. I'm rambling, let's move on. 
Next up on the list is Halo 2. Halo 2 is 20 years old for the 20th anniversary. Uh, we have a mod group called, calling themselves DigSite, who are fairly prevalent in the modding community in Halo. They teamed up with Halo Studios to do this, so it's not just them modding it. The, uh, the what, what it is, before I get ahead of myself, what it is is they've released the E3 2003 playable demo as hardware for the PC, or as software rather, for the PC. It is inside of the Master Chief collection, the workshops I believe is what it's called on the PC version. I only have the Xbox version of the MCC, so I I don't have access to this, sadly. Like, this is almost enough to make me consider getting the, the PC version of it, too, because there's a lot of stuff in the MCC PC version that isn't in the Xbox version that I really want, like, specifically ability to access mods and a lot of people have done a lot of really cool stuff in the modding community so if you're big into fps's specifically you've kind of fallen off of late with halo and you you were big on it though around about two three before four launched before three four three took over then the the Master Chief Collection is really what you want regardless of where you're playing it, but Master Chief Collection on PC seems to be far more catered to people in that realm of the FPS genre. So yeah, pretty significant E3 2003 demo. Again, they got help from Halo Studios for this. So Halo Studios is understanding what the community wants at least a little bit better these days. Let's move from there though. We have an update on the PAL World lawsuit. Pokemon and PAL World are head-to-head, are -head, but it's not because of game design, necessarily. It's not because of the idea of the collectible monsters or anything like that. What it is, we now know, because the, the Pocket the Pocket Pals or whatever the, the, the company name Pocket Pair, there it is. Pocket Pair being sued by Pokemon Company. Pocket Pair has come out and given us at least some sort of detail as to what they're being sued for. Uh, the patents are related specifically to the mechanics of catching and riding the creatures. There are three different patents involved in this. What I, I'm pretty sure we noted last time we talked about this, but there's been a little bit more details come out on this as well. The interesting thing about this is that the patents have were officially filed after the PAL World game came out. However, there is a caveat to that. The, the process of filing was started for these patents back in 2021, long before PAL World came out. So it was actually before Pokemon Arceus actually was released. So yeah, the there and then it gets even slightly weirder beyond that. So the weirdest part about this, I think, is the amount of money they're seeking in damages because Pokemon Company and Nintendo specifically are not really known for being very kind with their lawsuits. I mean, it's a lawsuit, so by nature, it's not a very kind thing, but I mean, depending on how you look at it, whatever. But usually they would go for punitive damages. They would go for a bunch of money to prove a point. This time though, they're going for 5 million yen, which that might sound a lot to uh, somebody from the States who $5 million is a lot of money. However, yen converted into US dollars, it's a little bit over $65,000 total between all three patent violations they're looking for approximately 65,000 US total a little bit more than 65 it's like 65 700 or something like that so yeah very very strange this situation like really that's like pocket change for for someone like Nintendo so I don't understand the significance there, but that is what we've got there. Let's move into our final piece of follow-ups, and it has to do with Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. If you are riding the fence as to whether or not you want to play the remake for Dead Rising, then you can go get a demo for it. There's a link down in the description. Uh, it is up currently for the big three, the big three being Steam, PlayStation 5 and Xbox. If you have one of those platforms, then you can go get the demo for Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. And then we actually have a couple of trailers to get out of the way this week. Like I said, gaming is a little bit significant comparatively. 
so trailers this week. First one is for a game that was a Kickstarter and is now finally launching for the rest of us. It's called Knock Off. It is a fighting game that was this independently being developed. The video, you can find the, the, the video for, or the trailer for it down in the description. And you can find a link to pre-order also down there. Uh, this, it looks like it could be pretty damn fun. I mean, obviously I haven't played it, so I don't know how the mechanics work exactly. And I don't know like what the balance feels like, but it, this look, I mean, it's, it, the, the look of this is hyper realistic toys. Like the characters are action figures knockoffs of action figures from when I was a kid. Like there's an obviously a He-Man knockoff, there's a Ninja Turtles knockoff, there's a Transformers knockoff, there's just is really cool. It's a fairly limited cast. This feels, uh, as far as like cast size, this feels like the original Mortal Kombat game that came out in 1993, uh, three? Yeah, 93. It feels like that in size. It's approximately seven characters, it looks like, maybe even less because I'm not looking at it right now and I didn't write it down in the notes because I take a make the notes, but still looks like a hell of a lot of fun. Go check it out. Go look, go watch this trailer. It, it's, it's really a lot of fun with the voiceover and everything. So yeah. And then the other trailer that we have, honestly, I don't have in my grasp right now. I haven't watched it yet because it doesn't exist, but I know that literally as I'm filming this right now, and well, maybe as I finish filming this, but while I'm editing this, it will be released. And that is the Mortal Kombat 1 trailer for Ghostface. There's also a combat cast that is supposed to be happening today, probably again, while I'm editing this episode. So maybe there will be more to interject here, but otherwise we have a Ghostface trailer. We know Ghostface gameplay. Ghostface, Ghostface is releasing next week on the Mortal Kombat 1 game, so super stoked for that. That, though, is what we have for trailers. Let's talk about our regular-ass news, shall we? First up, we have NVIDIA's GeForce Now. This is a really stupid news piece. So, the GeForce Now cloud gaming service from NVIDIA. You have to pay for access to it and they're changing the pay structure and they're changing. No, most notable here is what there is the play cap. They're instigating a 100 hour a week play cap for users, for top tier users even. So, which comes out to about three and a half hours per day of play, which according to their statistics, is only going to affect approximately 4% of their players, but still, and then like, screw those guys, right? Like, what, the, I don't understand this. NVIDIA is one of the most profitable companies in the world, right? Like, legitimately one of the largest companies in the world. They could keep going back and forth with Apple as to who's the biggest company in the world. So why the cap? Like, I don't understand. They say it's for bandwidth reasons and, and, and a couple other things that they're talking about, but it, it feels like smoke and mirrors. It feels like just a reason to keep their customers under their thumb, but I don't understand exactly why they want that. Uh, yeah, so 100% or 100 hours, 4% of their players, there is a minor caveat here, and that is if you are currently a subscriber to GeForce Now Cloud Gaming, then this will not take effect for you until January of 2026, right? Was it January? Uh, yeah, January of 2026. So if your account exists before December 31st, then you will not have to then you will not be capped on your play hours until january of 2026 so you have a whole year approximately to still play as much as you want without any cap and also i would challenge you to see exactly how many hours a day are you playing and is it consistent throughout the week are you playing that many hours every day like it's it's an interesting situation there the next one we got is Sega. We have a piece from Sega that is just another big L for gaming, not restoration, what's the word I'm looking for? Gaming preservation, there we go. Gaming preservation. So Sega has announced that they're going to be pulling buttload of 
titles off of digital storefronts. A lot of these in their back, from their very far back catalog, like Streets of Rage and Sonic and so on and so forth. Just uh, see if I have, I have a, a more comprehensive, like big names here. We have Crazy Taxi, Nights Into Dreams, Jet Set Radio, and those are like the biggest, biggest. And then there's Streets of Rage, I mean, honestly, is probably even bigger than that. It's getting pulled. There's a list of 70 plus games that they're pulling off of digital storefronts. And presumably at this point, maybe some of them are going to get re-released into like collections and arcade collections and remasters and so on and so forth. But they're not gonna remaster and redistribute 70 games. So some of these games are just dead in the water at this point. So again, just another big L for gaming preservation. And this comes a week after the US Copyright Office has denied access to historical games for researchers, like the academics of studying the significance of gaming. These people don't have access, according to the US Copyright Office, to the original games through emulation because money basically is what it boils down to. Because they're, they're trying to say that people are just gonna play free games and blah, 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 when there are things like this in place for other mediums, like movies and television shows, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, books, comic books. All of that exists for academics if you're doing research on, on a topic that involves them. The only exception to that is gaming. We do not have this access for gaming at this point, which I think is absolutely asinine. But that's just me, let's move on. <laughs> Next up, we have Death Stranding is our big piece here. I love this. So Hideo Kojima and Kojima Productions have finally got all of the rights back in-house to the Death Stranding franchise, five years after its initial release. And so because they did that, because they now have all of the rights to themselves, they have released Death Stranding for approximately 20 bucks, it's on sale. So it's originally like, like 35, 40 bucks, but it's on sale right now for 20 bucks on Xbox, on, on the Xbox game store. You can buy it for about 20 bucks. Uh, and it's the director's cut version too. So all of the extra content and all of the extra awesome Hideo Kojima-ness of it is available to Xbox players now, again, five years after the fact. This is freaking cool. And they totally did it like in the dark of night. Like they just were like, oh yeah, by the way, this is up. Uh, we did this yesterday. I don't know what to tell you. So pretty cool. Next up, let's talk about the death of streaming. Well, not really. This actually is the death of a streaming platform, but only by name and kind of, I don't know, we're, we're going to get into the weeds here. So Freebie is the name of the, the platform that's going the way of the buffalo here. They're, they're sunsetting it, if you will. They being Amazon Prime. And <clears throat> what I mean by it's not really the death of streaming because all of the current content on Freebie, originals and everything else, is going to be migrated over to Amazon Prime. And it will still be shown with commercials because it's part of their whole move to commercials to become profitable situation. Uh, but still, they all of that content is still available technically for free, assuming you already have a Prime membership. At the very least, a, a what is the minimum Prime membership is like 15 bucks a month, which also gets you free shipping on Amazon. And you know you buy a bunch of Amazon stuff, so why don't you have an Amazon Prime account? That's just weird. But yeah, so if you don't have Amazon Prime, that is the situation where you're not going to have access to this material for free anymore, presumably. It, it seems like there's a possibility they might open up something, a limited selection or something like that for free if they're getting rid of Freebie, but that's totally my conjecture and speculation. They don't have to do that. They own all this stuff. They can do with it as they please, and it's silly, but that's the way it is. So yeah, Freebie is no more. The official date I don't have in here, but it's it's over the course of the next, I think, month. By the end of the year, Freebie will be gone. It's They're, they're slowly going to be sunsetting all of the, the, the content there. Next up is an AI piece that we need to talk about. So Grok over on X, or also considered XAI, but the name of it is Grok. We, uh, they launched the new model of Grok, Grok 2, and as it's been since the release of the original Grok AI model, you have to have X Premium in order to access Grok. 
at all. Uh, it looks like going forward, they don't have any s dates as to when this is going to be happening, but going forward, they are looking into allowing limited access to all X users for free. And then if you have premium, then you get the, the different levels of premium, then you get different levels of access to Grok. The limited access for free users is you can ask Grok to proper 10 questions a, uh, every two hours. So it's not per day, it's every two hours for the text-based stuff. So uh, every two hours you can ask 10 questions of Grok 2 proper, the big model. They have a small model that they're launching as well, Grok 2 Mini, and if you are going more, more over your 10 questions for every two hours limit, then you can switch over to Grok 2 Mini, and it is 20 questions every two hours that you will be allotted on X with their AI. Also here, the image stuff is you get three image-based analyses or whatever you do with images on Grok, because I've never used Grok, but three of those per day. So the image-based stuff is going to be daily, whereas the text-based stuff is hourly, bi-hourly even. So interesting, no date, like I said, no date as to when this is going to happen, but it does, th this is beyond rumor at this point, this is just a matter of implementation. So this is the final piece of regular ass news. There will not be a recommend a suggestion this week. We're just not doing suggestions. But Warner Brothers Games, there is there's a lot going on here, and it's all based from one piece. So Warner Brothers Games is kind of sort of in trouble. There was a big investors call. The 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 what is it the. Earnings call. There was a big earnings call here last week that David Zaslav was talking to investors and people in the media, and he said that they are they are going to be focusing going forward on franchises, on proven franchises. These are almost quotes. I'm kind of paraphrasing, but this is pretty close to what he said. They're going to be focusing on proven franchises. And then he names specifically Batman, Mortal Kombat, Harry Potter, and I think there were two or three other ones. Well, those are kind of the biggest, biggest ones as far as the nerd communities are concerned. So everyone has been taking this and writing a million different articles. Like I literally saw an article for each of the names specifically that he called out on a couple of different platforms. He, that, so there was an article saying that there's going to be more, more Mortal Kombat games and there's going to be more Batman games. There's going to be, like literally somebody wrote a full freaking article for one text media source for all of these games based off of this one phone call, this one statement even in this greater phone call. So like this, the basics of this are, David Zaslav has said that the gaming situation is in trouble. They are losing money in their gaming division. So they need to focus on proven franchises. He names examples, but that is not an explicit endorsement or, or an explicit announcement rather of anything new specifically coming out for them. We already know that there's going to be a Hogwarts Legacy 2 that it is actively in production, but now everybody is thinking that there's actively going to be a new Mortal Kombat game coming out soon. That's not true. Everyone's also thinking that there's going to be another new Batman game coming out soon. That, actually that one might be true. There are a couple of rumors behind the scenes that have been going for a few weeks at this point that have nothing to do with this phone call. So possibly there's another Batman game or something similar to that in the works. That might be happening. But to say that they're pushing new game, like, no, they're going to, Mortal Kombat specifically is, is where, I'm, where my brain's at with this, is they're going to focus, like they've said they're going to, on the current game. They're going to do everything they can to maximize its profitability. There's very likely going to be another DLC story mode for it. Like, that is still technically releasing Mortal Kombat content. That is still making Warner Brothers money. So, and all of the skins that they're releasing, that is also making Warner Brothers money. So that is what they're talking about. They're not talking about specifically, we need a new game, we need a new game, we need, no. We need to do things with what we have, and if it makes sense that it's time for a new game, then we're gonna release, well, and even that's probably being a little bit generous, because really it's going to be, all right, so game sales for your 
title have started to dip. We should start development on the next one. With the, the way that Mortal Kombat is functioning right now, I don't think that's going to be anytime super soon because, again, the story mode DLCs kind of count as a new game. So it's going to be probably a couple of years before we see anything. And even then, I think Injustice falls under the umbrella of Mortal Kombat because it's very profitable. It also comes from NetherRealm Studios. So the fact that everybody's going, oh, we're, we're just not going to get Injustice 3 now because he said Mortal Kombat. No, he was using examples. NetherRealm Studios makes Warner Brothers a lot of money. So the probability of us getting Injustice 3 next seems still pretty high. Will we get more content from Mortal Kombat 1? Abso-freaking-lutely. Do they have plenty of people at NetherRealm Studios that they could be doing both simultaneously? Yes. The likelihood of that, I don't know, it kind of depends on, on, on what you know of their, their business model, which I know not super a whole lot, but still, the possibility exists. I don't think that we need to take this as by the book, the, these are the exact words and there's no other interpretation. I think this is more of a Zaslav kind of using examples and trying to talk in, in kind of generalities, but also like we, he's recognizing the issues with their gaming division, specifically the Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. Uh, what was the multiverses has lost them a hundred million dollars. Like this is, there's been a lot of uh, the the Gotham Knights game lost them a boatload of cash as well. Like there have been a lot of L's in the WB gaming sphere, and they need to stop hemorrhaging money is what it boils down to. So. That's, I think, the best takeaway from that situation. Is it likely that some of these things that people are, 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 are guessing at are actually going to be happening? Eh, maybe, but really the, I, the, the big important thing is they're going to be focusing on the ones that we know are doing well. All right, that's what we got. <laughs> that's what we got for gaming and tech this week, nerds. That brings us to the end of the video, nerds. Thank you very much for joining me for the news. Once again, there is a full and probably much more up-to-date and recent episode of the news, the full-length version, if you will, called The Week in Nerdum over on the main channel, linked down in the description and probably link popping up somewhere around my face right about now. So click on that, go check that out as well. Or if you prefer your news in more truncated pieces, then by all means, just stick around here and go check out some of the other stuff we offer on this channel. Thank you very much for joining me. We will see you in the next one. Before we go, always, always remember, nerds, that if it is generally nerdy, it's probably here.